Hi, everyone. We did not get a chance to actually see the dashboard. So what I'm going to do is to show you the patient, the provider, and the care manager connections and how the workflow is. So right now, I'm going to log in as just a patient in our test system. And what you're going to see is their dashboard. We do have it set up so that Patients that particularly that have any kind of visual issues, they can go into the dark mode and they love that. We also have their goals over here so that we are able to have them communicate their goals, edit their goals, go back and change their networks and notification settings as well. And they can share this with their providers. So that's the kind of lay of the land. I'm going to go back to the home page. And on every single day, we have the patient log in and say, overall, how are they doing? Some people, like I said, may just stop here, and that's okay, because what we do is allow them to make the choices, which is where we see the behavior change and the engagement. Up here, really quickly before I start tracking, this is where you're going to invite the care manager, invite a healthcare provider, and any messages. If it's red, you don't have any. It's green, so that means I have some messages. So before messages, I'm going to just show you how easy it is to track. So how's the patient doing today? So I'm going to say I'm doing pretty darn good. How, and these are the symptoms I'm tracking for today. And my blurred vision is minimal. So I'm going to just click on there. It's a sliding scale. So you can actually go and slide it or you can kind of just drop it. It goes from no depression. It's on a scale of zero to 100 to the absolute worst depression, or whatever the symptom may be. If you notice here, this is low, and it says, this is awesome. What did you do to get better? Whenever there is a change of a minimum of 10% in either direction, good or bad, Sally makes them tell us what the heck happened. So I'm just going to put some gibberish in here and click save. And they're very compliant, and they put in a lot of information in that box as well. Light sensitivity, now I'm going to show you a different box. Over here, you can see where it popped up and says a 10% increase. When you have a 30% increase, a different box pops up, the red box. And what we want them to do is to actually notify their... So if they click on the learn more, this is what the CDC recommends when they're having certain symptoms surrounding their TBI. So in this case, again, you have to enter something. Otherwise, you cannot go through and forward with your tracking. Now, we also ask them, what did you do today? Because this is where the algorithms work. We have all these symptoms. And if you remember, we only started with four, but because of the volume of information patients gave us, we increased it with dietary and family or life events that they were experiencing. And in every single one of these different categories, which we'll go through, we have been able to actually add many more variables that the people were adding themselves. So for today, I have some muscle pain, okay? And is there anything else that I might be experiencing? Not really. I'll go to travel. Um, I did a lot of walking today. And I also, I'm going to say I did some biking as well. Screen time. And occurred with the screen time. I'm on the computer a lot today and I'm on the phone today. I also have a lot of work and paperwork that's going on. Environmental conditions. We actually only have these top five, but this is what the people added for us because these were continually being tracked by the population on Sally. So today I'm going to say it's really bright, really hot, and I apologize for my computer dinging. I've got a lot of messages coming in, poor air quality. And just remember, a patient can actually customize every single day whatever is happening to them. So I'm going to put in the fires are really impacting me today. And let's go to dietary. I'm going to say I just feel like I'm overeating a lot. And then all of a sudden, I've got these gluten issues family or life events. Again, you can scroll through, you can ask them, this is what the care manager or caregiver can do. I'm gonna say I seem to be very argumentative and I'll just say, so that is how fast a patient can actually track on a daily event. And if you notice, we allow them to journal throughout the day. So if something happens, if they track first thing in the morning and then you know everything falls apart, they can come back into Sally and they do, uh, and they just track and tell us what actually happened. Go into adding more symptoms. And again, this is all standardized across every single 
kind of client, whether it's a patient, care manager, or a provider, uh, we have these reports. And if you look at this and I hover over it, this will show you what was I tracking that day. And here's a count. On this day, July 2nd, I had 14 triggers and here they all are. If I click on this one, this is the trigger or the SDOH data. And you can see again what happened on this day that so many things were going on. So clearly there was a lot of computer use because you can see on the screen time. But let's go into the detailed reports. So let's just click on the overall feelings. I'm going to scroll up to give you an idea. We allow patients or caregivers or care managers or providers to look at a variety of settings. So you could go from five days to 30 days to 90 days to 120 days. So I'll just stay on the last 30 days and you can see how this is real time. If I hover over this, this is only going to just expand a little bit in terms of the dietary. But when I come over to the medical one, if I decide to click on the vision, I click over here and now you can see what are the vision symptoms I'm tracking. So over here, I had a huge increase, but then I had a drop. So this is where it becomes very informative. If I go over to the 27th of July to June 30th, I would wanna go back and I wanna look at their STOH for that time. What did I do that caused it to come down? I can also just hover and I can see that there was a lot less stimulus going up. Let me go back to the other reports. If I hover over, let's say the emotional one, which is accounting for, or cognitive, that's accounting for 30% of the symptoms. So again, this is the brain fog. This is the poor concentration. So I just added poor concentration and that is why you're not seeing any tracking over here. But I went for a long time without tracking at all. So these are the differences. Again, this is where the person is able to track and to have this real time accommodating their schedule. So let me go back. And now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. Here's your top triggers. Here's your top symptoms. How many times did I have an overall feeling of happy? Well, I'm a pretty happy patient 100% of the time. And again, this is a 30 day in review snapshot. If I wanna change this to the last five days, again, everything changes and here's my last five days. So now I wanna go back and just show you quickly how easy it is to add symptoms. Right here at this button, would you like to add some symptoms? Well, yes, I would. So currently, you can see these are the symptoms that I'm tracking. These are the symptoms I was tracking. So I've obviously made a very big improvement. I can unpause these symptoms and bring them back in. I can pause them. And again, I can come down here and I can start clicking on these other ones. And I can say, oh, I really kind of want to add this one. So let's just see, what do I want to track again? Um, I want to track, let's go to the poor and little sleep. It's simply that easy. If I'm done unpausing the symptoms, I hit close and it will save it. If I wanna go in and I wanna say, oh, maybe I wanna track fatigue, and then I save it and that's it. That's how simple it is for a patient to track, to add and to monitor. Now I have to add in my poor or little sleep and I'm gonna say it's pretty bad. So. Because I was tracking poor or little sleep before, that's why this note has popped up. So again, I'm just gonna add some gibberish. I'm gonna click save and I'm done tracking for the day. Now, before I sign off, let's look at the messages. I know that I've got everywhere there's a green, I've got a provider message coming in. So here, it came in, it was received from the provider and then tell me what you did, I want you to come in. This was because I emailed my provider and I said, I had such a severe reaction to the fireworks and noise, et cetera, et cetera. When did it go in? Yes, it was read. Now I'm going to read my message. Yes, I read it, he wants me to come in. I'm going to also send my provider a message and we double check to make sure because I've got multiple providers connected, I don't want to inadvertently send it to the wrong one. Then I will say, can I do a telehealth call instead? And obviously I have to hyphenate that. And I hit send. And that is how simple it is 
to go ahead and have secured messaging back and forth. And then the only other thing to show you from the patient perspective is if, now you can see it's all red, if I wanted to invite a care manager or if I wanted to invite a healthcare provider, you would just simply type in their name and I'll just put it in test at test.com. It's just a fake email and you hit send and that's it. I'm going to log out and then I'm going to log back in as a care manager and then a provider so you can see all those views.